Hi, good morning, photo editors. Um, today I'd like to talk to you about how you can use Photoshop Fix to make some basic changes to your photos and fix them up a little bit. I would love for you to use your own photo along with me if you would like, especially if you already have something set up. Uh, now I'm using the version for iPad. If you're looking to edit on the computer, I already have a video up on my YouTube channel. So right now I'm just scrolling through my photos to find the one that I want. I'm going to select this one because this is a photo that I think already has some really good things going for it, but there are a couple things I could edit. Now the first thing you will want to do before you do anything else so that you kind of already know um, the, the overall look of your photo and you've cut out any parts you don't need is to go to that crop tool. You can also rotate from there if you wanted to as well. Um, now, my photo is pretty much cropped the way I want. That's one thing that I think is going for it. But let me point out a couple things at the bottom. Right now, you'll see a blue bar under the word free. This is because right now, if you were to crop it, you can kind of move this box however you want. But if you hit something like square, you can only select a square. So this is great if you need it in a square shape, if you like it better, that way and you'd rather just make it really exact. Uh, maybe you're putting it on Instagram and you kind of want it to be a square because that's their format. Those are all options down here. Um, or if you're getting it printed somewhere and you know for sure you want a certain size. I made this artwork, I made this photo for an artwork I was going to do that was going to be four inches by five inches. So it already fits that four by five ratio. I'm going to exit though because I don't really need to crop it. I think I have it where I want it more or less at this point. There's a little bit of white space in the corner that I'm not entirely happy with, but I don't want to cut off the eyes of the other cat either. So if I was in the cropping tool, I could still do that and see how it looks because I can always undo what I just did. There is a back button at the top. So now let's look at adjust. There are a couple things you can do here. I would recommend playing with the exposure at least a little bit, seeing if you want to change it. Um, but if your exposure is pretty much where you want it, you could just leave it. Contrast is something I do boost in basically all of my photos. Now, if I boost it too much, you can see how those colors get um, to be just a little too much. Or if I take it too low, you can see I can, everything turns gray. So I usually do just a little bit of contrast boosting, but not too much. The warmth tool can just kind of let you adjust what kind of lighting you had. Let's say you took, like I took it inside. Um, with some yellowy light, and if I wanted to make it a little less yellow, I could cool it down, make it look like I took it outside. Um, that's something I, I think I would like to do for this photo, just tone it down just a little bit here and make it a little bit cooler. Now, saturation, I'm pointing out because I often don't need to do this much with photos. You probably won't either. Um, in terms of bringing up the saturation, it does look nice to a point, but you see how right around here the colors are just getting a little bit crazy. So unless you are really going for a look that looks like this, where everything is starting to change colors almost, I would recommend sticking really close to the middle. On the other hand, if you wanted a black and white photo, you could just crank that saturation all the way down, or maybe you're going for a certain mood and you just want a little bit of low color. That is something you could do, but I'm going to leave mine in the middle. Shadows and highlights are another way of working with contrast. Um, so if you drag the shadow slider up, it seems to kind of get rid of them, but if you drag it down, it makes your shadows just a little bit stronger, um, which I usually do just a little bit to boost, to boost the contrast. Um, same with highlights, or highlight thingy like high light, like there's a lot of it. If you turn it all the way down, you can see it changes the way those spots on their heads look. Um, I would not brighten those individual highlights that much because I, I don't want them to get distracting. Once you're happy with those basic adjustments, I'll skip the liquify and healing tools because um, those are kind of going beyond the basic edits here. Um, what I'm going to move over to is light. This is where we get into something called burning and dodging. They don't call it burning and dodging in this app, but that is what it is in regular Photoshop. So let's look at your tools off to the side for a sec. If you press and hold on size and then move your finger up and down the screen, you can see how you can adjust the brush size. Hardness is how fuzzy it is. If you um, draw on something, it will have very hard lines if you keep the hardness up. So I like to turn mine really, really low. 
and you can also change the opacity. So let's say we turn it up really, really high and we use lighten. You end up with a very dramatic light spot on your image. I recommend turning it down somewhere around like 20, 25, 15, kind of depends what you're going for here. Um, but then you can lighten just a little bit. So I would say I want this cat to be just a little bit, a little bit lighter, brighten it up, see that cat's face a little bit more. And that's something you can try. You can also kind of heighten what's already there if you want to bring it up a notch. And you can see I've created a bit of a line where the edge of that brush was. So that means I could change my opacity or my hardness to fix that just a little bit. So maybe I will bring my opacity down a little bit. And now you can see that when I edit, you don't see this really harsh line where I did the edits. So now let's talk about the darken tool from our burning and dodging tools. Actually, before I do, I'm gonna bring this up just a little bit, the thing the cat's holding. Okay, so now let's talk about the darken tool. Again, this is something where you want to keep the opacity low. You wanna be kind of careful with your size and your hardness because here's what happens if you turn up the opacity. If you put a shadow on top, it's going to be very dramatic. So if you are looking to avoid that, you want to really turn that down. I'm going to make it 15. Just to darken a couple shadows and make those areas more dramatic. So if I want the golden cat's face to look a little bit brighter, I can add a bit more of a shadow in the background. Or if I want to push the background back a little bit more, I can do a little bit of burning here because in the dark room this would be called burning and dodging so I can darken some shadows I can always make that background go back in space just a little bit more and you don't really usually have to do too much of this um this is just to make your photo look a little more interesting and to change up your lighting a little bit more so now let's go back to our main set of tools and the last one I'm going to look at is color. So this is where you can desaturate it. Um, I'm not going to in this case, but if you hit the desaturate, the minus on the bottom, I turn up the opacity. What it does is it makes parts of it black and white. Um, so if you remember, oh, oh, this was kind of a trend a while ago, but there's a, a trend where you'd have a black and white photo and only one thing would be colored. This is how artists would do it. They would just change the saturation and desaturation and they would just kind of color in what was supposed to be more saturated. In my case, I could probably saturate more. Um, so again, I keep the I keep the settings pretty pretty low. If you keep them really really high, you might end up kind of oversaturating your items a little bit and completely changing their color. I would rather not turn the gold into orange, so I'm going to turn down my opacity a lot. I don't need much. These cats are already really colorful. Um, I'm just gonna bring my brush up just a little bit. So now if I were to boost the saturation a little bit on this cat's face, I'm only doing just a little bit just to make this cat a little more interesting because that gold color didn't pick up quite the way I wanted it to in the photo. The other thing I'd like to do is this green cat in the front is, is pretty bright. I can see that cat really well, but perhaps I could make this bluish cat stand out just a little bit more by boosting that saturation. And then again, this one on the ground, maybe just boosting those colors just a little bit would help to make that one stand out and kind of bring all of these cats together. Now, if you wanted to, you could always desaturate some stuff. Um, I don't really make a habit of desaturating things. Some people do it to the background to make it kind of go backwards in space a little bit more. So I'll show you what that looks like in this case. And I did a lot of it so you can kind of see how that fades it backwards. And I wasn't too careful with it, but that is technically, I mean, it's something you can do. Um, I don't really make a habit of that, but every once in a while it'll work for somebody. So I just pointed it out so you can see what it does. After that though, you are pretty much done with your basic edits and you can go ahead and save that to your camera roll and you are all good to go. Anyway, thank you so much for checking this out. Um, feel free to try it on your own photos anytime, not just for school projects. This is just great for anything you need to submit photos for. 
Anyway, have fun with this. Thanks for watching.